Hello, this is New Vision TV. I'm Lynn Komjisha. Today, Bushenyi District hosts the 55th Independence Anniversary Celebrations. Bushenyi is arguably one of the most successful districts in the country on political, social and economic fronts. Many say it benefited from Obote's favours of the 1980s as a hotbed of the Uganda People's Congress. However, there's more to Bushenyi than just politics. So what is special about Bushenyi District? Bushenyi District is located in western Uganda. Like many other Ugandan districts, it is named after its chief town, Bushenyi, where the district headquarters are located. Before 2010, when it was divided into five districts, Bushenyi consisted of the present day Rubirizi District to the northwest, Buheju District to the northeast, Shema District to the east, Mitoma District to the south, and Rukunjiri District to the west. The the largest town in the district, Ishaka, is located 75 kilometers by road, northwest of Mbarara, the largest town in the sub-region. Prior to 2010, Bushenyi district was one of the most western of Uganda's districts by location. It covered an area of approximately 4,292.5 square kilometers, of which 8.0% was open water. 2.2% was wetlands and 18.3% was protected natural forest reserve. All that changed on 1st July 2010 when by act of parliament, the old Bushenyi district was split into five new smaller districts, namely Buheju district, Bushenyi district, Mitoma district, Rubilizi district and Shema district. Bushenyi district is fairly endowed with natural resources. The the district has relatively low poverty levels among its residents. The economy of the district depends mainly on agriculture. Agriculture is a source of food for the population, subsistence income for most families, and provides direct employment to 86.7% of the district population, as well as supplying raw materials to industries. The majority of the people are involved in subsistence agriculture, with some engaged in commercial production of crops. Ranching for beef and dairy farming for milk production are widely practiced on both subsistence and commercial scales in Bushenyi. Hybrid cattle are widely raised on farms in the district. The hybrids produce more milk per animal and yield more beef per carcass and therefore have generated a lot of money for the locals. In Bushenyi, no home is complete without a banana plantation, a coffee garden, a cow and poetry. With an increased market for food, coffee, eggs, milk have turned an average peasant in Bushenyi into a rich person earning above 6 million per annum. Today's function serves as a reminder of the days of 1980s when Milton Obota was president after his heroic welcome from exile in Bushenyi on May 27, 1980. Obote made it an annual event to celebrate Heroes Day on May 27 in Bushenyi until he was overthrown exactly two months before he had left Bushenyi in 1885. Bushenyi boasted of high-ranking government officials during the Obote to regime. These included Andonia Tiberonda, Minister for Supplies, Chris Rakasisi, Minister for Security, Edward Durangaranga, Minister in the President's Office, Yona Kanyomozi, and Ambassador Plain Potentially, Professor Ephraim. However, when Museven took over power, Bushenyi became one of the favored districts in terms of ministerial appointments. It has had senior ministers such as Richard Kaizuka, then Minister for Trade and Industry, Bart Katrebe, then Minister for Justice and Constitutional Affairs, Kahinda Otafide, now Justice Minister, Amanya Mshega, then Minister for Education, Karoro Krutu, now Minister for General Duties in the Prime Minister's Office, Eliot Atmwesije, now Minister for Science and Innovation, Richard Induhura, then State Minister for Health, and Professor Tassis Kawejere, the then Minister for Disaster and Preparedness. Whether Bushenyi's wealth is out of politics or hard work, 
is not the issue, but what is clear is that the district has excelled more than the others and deserves to host this year's independent celebrations. Here at New Vision TV, we wish every Ugandan a happy 55th independence anniversary. You're still watching New Vision TV, and now for Pearl of Africa series, we take a look at the African rock python. The African rock pythons are the third biggest snakes in the world. These have the capacity to kill and swallow a prey that is thrice their size. Such a snake is kept at the Uganda Wildlife Education Center, and we have the pleasure of featuring it in our daily Pearl of Africa series. Take a look. The snake coiling in the grass is known as an African rock python. They are identified from the patterns on their bodies, which are thick and covered with colored brooches and irregular stripes. These body markings vary between brown, olive, chestnut, and yellow, but fade to white on the underside. The head is triangular and marked on top with a dark brown spearhead outlined in buffy yellow. As the trained is at the Uganda Wildlife Education Center, all the animals kept here here have names. Dan Mirembe, a zookeeper, explains how they derived to giving this python a name. So we give them names depending on the pattern that they have on their skin. So for this snake here, if you can come very close, uh, you will see this one is like letter N, okay? This one is like letter N, and these are three eyes, and this one is N. And then the other one, this word, uh, so this one we can call it Nini. So we have Kamuli, we have Kui, so depending on the pattern that they have. UEC has just six necks of this kind, but normally such creatures are not rescued from predators, but appear suddenly. Such necks are known to be the biggest in Africa and third in the world. They are ranked third because they can swallow a human being who is thrice their size. So one of the things which you have to know is that uh, the skull of the snakes is not like the skull of other animals. The skull is jointed. So that one makes it uh, to become, to open at different angles. And then point number two, the jaws here. The jaws, they can open very wide at an angle of 170 degrees wide. And then also during the swallowing process, the heart, which is formed around this place, uh, it can change direction slightly to efficient the, the prey that is, that is being swallowed and then also it has the saliva gland that contains much saliva. So during the swallowing process the saliva is always released to lubricate the prey. So now if he has eaten the animal which has heavy bones they take time to fully digest the food. So let us say if it has eaten a human being or an antelope or a dog which have heavy bones it can take an average of six months. So for the period of six months it would be in a dormant stage, inactive. Mirembe adds that even when they are attacked after feeding, they can vomit the prey and respond to the attack. This makes me ask, what do they feed these animals with? It's a little bit expensive to maintain these animals, but we being the only institution that is mandated to the rescue and the habitation of wildlife is that uh, we, it's, uh, we, we have nothing to do. So we feed them on chicken and uh, the response is always depending on the what? On the appetite. So if one has good appetite, it can eat even all the 30 chicken. So on every week, we normally give them around 30 chicken. So we put them inside there, and each one will keep on picking one by one. They don't eat very fast. They take time to eat, to eat and uh, also do the entire digestion. A male python is differentiated from a female by physically looking at the size and the tail. The female African rock python is bigger than the male and also the tail of the female is more pointed than that of a male. I can't say snakes are friendly animals, but according to Mirembe, a snake gives you a warning before it attacks. This can explain why he can freely hold it on his shoulder and freely interacts with me as he lightly holds its head. For more Pearl of Africa stories, visit our website www.newvision.co.ug. I am Ruth Inaseje for New Vision TV. 
And that's all we had for you. Thank you for watching. Be sure to catch more of your updates on your mobile, on your desktop, on your tablet, anywhere on the go by visiting www.newvision.co.ug. I am Lynn Komdisha.